Trans star and Harris I'll County Judge Lena Hidalgo. Finish, then they will speak and we'll all answer questions. The bottom line uh, this evening is we're in for another long night. Our primary concern right now continues to be power. The state ERCOT power outages are hitting us so, so hard. I know uh, what a nightmare it is for so many people. Uh, what a nightmare it is to be without power. It's not just cold, it's bitter cold. It's unbelievably miserable. I can tell you a lot of folks here have family in that situation. Same f goes for my family uh, and my loved ones. Uh, so it's, it's very tough. The good news is there were 70,000 outages caused by weather in our region for Center Point, and now that number is down to 30,000. So they've been able to get those weather caused outages repaired. And uh, Jason will speak to this in a bit. The bad news is there continue to be 1.2 million customers without power due to the forced state ERCOT outages. That's roughly the same as yesterday, and that number has shifted a little bit. Centerpoint tells us they're open for business. They just need the product, the product being that electricity. Right now, I'm focused on working with the state and federal level. I've fielded many calls from counterparts at the federal level, uh, at the state level, collaborating, pushing for ERCOT to bring energy generation back up online so that we can get people the electricity they need. And I'm confident that folks are working on that. We've been hit hard by nature this week. But we can't deny that some of this is a man-made disaster as well. And the five million residents of this county and really this region and this state will deserve answers from ERCOT and the state once this is over. We will push for that answer once this is over, but right now we have to focus on working together. In the meantime, I do say this both for myself and for every resident of this county, we need some clarity. I'm talking to counterparts across the state, and we're being told the generators are coming online only to be told more homes are losing power. ERCOT needs to stop being overly optimistic and give us the clarity of what the outlook really looks like. Not because I don't want to have optimism, but because I don't want to create, since this started, we've seen less generation, not more. So let me give it to you straight, based on the visibility I have. Whether you have power or not right now, there is a possibility of power outages even beyond the length of this weather. There's a generation shortfall right now, and it's a matter of when ERCA is going to get that power up and running. So until we begin to see that their optimistic estimates actually pan out on more people, not fewer people without power, we have to assume the worst. Let me take a minute to raise the alarm about carbon monoxide poisoning. And that's why Dr. Prater is here as well. Uh, Chief Christensen can speak to that. It is an incredibly crucial issue right now. It's heartbreaking. We've seen a flood of calls coming in reporting carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, there have been at least 300 calls, whether that is to our fire marshal, the hospitals, the other jurisdictions. Those are the ones we know of. But these leaders tell me that, that the sense is that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's been at least two fatalities. A woman and her eight-year-old daughter this morning uh, died due to carbon monoxide poisoning. And the truth of the matter is, this carbon monoxide uh, poisoning is in many ways a disaster within a disaster. Please protect yourself and your family. Keep them safe. Much of these uh, poisoning calls, uh, the deaths, they're due to bringing grills into the house, turning cars on in garages, basically using outdoor equipment inside. You can use that equipment to stay warm, just don't use it in your home. Keep it away from your home. Water is another hazard we're dealing with, so I'm going to talk about that briefly. The effect of frozen pipes and weather impacts are, are, are having an effect on water pressure. Check with your local utility district to see if there's a boiled water notice. We're getting reports at varying times. 
If you still have water, remember to preserve some. Don't be one of the folks that I've talked to recently who say, you know, I, I, I knew I was supposed to fill the bathtub, but I didn't get around to it, and now I don't have water. Make sure you preserve the water right now while you have it. Very quickly on the road safety. Roads are getting more dangerous again by the minute. What melted today is turning into ice again. If you are not home, get home and stay there. To be clear, the roads will continue to be dangerous into tomorrow. So don't plan to get up in the morning and get moving. We're going to have to wait until into the day and we'll keep folks informed. We know that people did well over the past couple of days. The first responders continue to be surprised at the relatively low number of accidents. We only had 15 new major accidents, 15 uh, reported to the sheriff's office uh, today as of the la latest report, which is actually a relatively small number given the size of our county. So let's keep it that way. I'll briefly touch on some of the activities we're engaging in. Of course, keeping up the warming shelters, helping coordinate across the different warming shelters, not just the county, uh, but the city, uh, other nonprofit organizations and folks who are trying to help. County facilities and buildings will be closed Wednesday and Thursday. On vaccinations, Harris County Public Health will contact folks on our wait list once they're able to administer vaccines safely again. They may be able to start administering uh, some second doses and testing on Friday, but folks are already uh, will be contacted. Anybody who is contacted that can't make it will have an opportunity to reschedule once the weather passes and the power issues pass. So folks who've been selected out of the wait list don't have to worry that they're going to be put back into it. We're going to work through that and our systems are set up for it. We're continuing to coordinate with our partners, be it from the grocery stores, uh, be it from the state, law enforcement, the various jurisdictions within and surrounding Harris County, our congressional and state delegations. We're going to continue working together and looking out for any of these crises within the crisis. I know things look bleak. And we're going to be in for a long week. It's been a long week already. Uh, many people are exhausted, but we'll get there. We're expecting some beautiful Southeast Texas weather uh, this weekend into next week. So we've got that to look forward to. And we're going to continue working together to get through this. I just ask that you continue to protect yourself and your family by taking that personal responsibility uh, when you're home. Careful with the carbon monoxide poisoning. And of course, um, please don't be out and about driving right now. I, I will mention one more point is, is fires. We've seen some reports of fires, fire alarms going off. Uh, it is a an, an many, many fold increase in the fire alarm calls that we receive on a blue sky day, on a normal day. These fires many times are caused by uh, just this, the impacts of the power outage. So the recommendation to the community is simply pay attention to those fire alarms. Don't just let it go off. Remember, you, you, you need to evacuate and make sure that it's okay because uh, we are seeing a lot more reports than, than we normally do. So I'll close with, with that. Um, you know, let's stay on it. We're, we're pushing for this power to come back on from the state ERCOT system. We're working here. We'll be here all night again. You've got very committed first responders uh, looking out for you, and we've got a tough and resilient community. So we'll keep getting through this.